Composing Gloves here today, we're checking out a new Wavetable synthesizer. This is by Soka Labs, it's called Wavetable. It's about two months old. It sounds like this. Let's take off the velocity sensitivity here on this default patch. That's the default patch. It's a Wavetable synth though, and there are a ton of presets. And if you go into the browser, there's a whole tagging system so you can find what you're looking for. Let's just go in here. Let's go through a few. I, I like some of these chord ones. Let's go down to the basses. You know, that's always where the, the fun stuff is. You'll find that visually, it just looks great. Yeah. We're gonna go over some of the quirks this particular synth has. The um, way they do modulation takes a little getting used to. Let's continue on through some of these presets though. So those are some of the bases. There's a bunch of crazy bases. Oh, we're about to hit the chord patches, perfect. <laughs> Got some drums in here. Yeah, the kick is an impressive patch. There's some fun hard style ones in here. Or hardcore. Okay, let's dive a bit into the synth engine, but that gives you an idea of some of the sounds. Crazy amounts of sounds in here. Uh, you can go through, check them out. Let's go to the default, and let's take off the velocity sensitivity just so we can hear what we're doing a bit easier. So, kind of your standard stuff in here that you would expect from a wavetable synth. Uh, extremely visual. So, the bends just look, just how smooth it is, is something I find myself just sort of looking, I sometimes just look to modulate things just to make the wavetables look pretty <laughs> instead of how they sound. Um, that's the bend though. You can see the bend, the form and shift. So let's hear this. So there you go. There's the bends. And then we also have, where are you at? Bends, 
shifts. Oh, and then positions over here. You could also just click to to drag. You could also import stuff. I've not experimented with uh, Im importing tables, so I'm not sure how it is. Uh, but you can try that out. Let me know what you find. If you if it's fine, it's fine. If it's not, you know, let us know. Unison, that kind of a thing. So those are the tables. You have two of these. And then you've got like noise, sub, your filters. And, you know, here are all your, your filter types. And ADSR, and then your modulation sources, the matrix for those sources, your effects, a gate source and then you know your global outs so the modulation i really quick want to highlight because there is a bit of a two ways to work with it and one of them took me a while to get used to how it behaves so let's see that we turn lfo one on so here are our lfos so there are two ways to link this up so you've got a mono way to do it where you could just click and drag this little handle to whatever you want to control and it like lights up so say we want to move the position of this we could drag it there you can see it's like you know it's, it's freaking out we could bring the rate down and it, it will modulate it let's go ahead let's put this in the middle and reduce the depth some and if you ever get a little lost the source and matrix tab so here are your sources you could just sort of grab them and you can see their handles here or you can I spend most of my time on the matrix tab. I don't come to the source tab hardly ever. So here it is. You can turn it on and off here if you want to toggle uh, certain ones on and off. So that's pretty nice to have just right there on the same page. Usually matrix is like tucked away on another tab. So it's kind of cool to just have it there. And we can see it moving around, doing kind of exactly what we want it to. So let's right click and remove it. Now there's another way to modulate it. If we click, it's now been like highlighted white and it says up here LFO one mono. And what this means is any knob you move is going to assume that you're changing the modulation depth of this source. So you're linking them up. So I could drag and there you go, it's linked up. Now the thing is, this is uh, still here. <laughs> and this can sometimes uh, throw me off because maybe the rate's too fast. And I'm like, oh, I wanna adjust the rate. So I try to move the knob up, but instead I accidentally add a depth to it and it can be really easy to do this on accident and this is just going to stay there so let's go let's remove this so you have to remember to either click on this to get rid of it or you have to click on the thing that was highlighted and that'll also get rid of it it's very convenient that it's up here because sometimes you're like what was i controlling where is it again and you're looking for that tiny thing so anyways that's how it works so every now and then i'll do this and i'll, I'll get sort of like lost there's also one one feature here that I'm just not sure I'm getting it to work right. Or maybe I misunderstand it. I couldn't find a manual or anything. So um, the, you see that this says mono and there's two of these. So I assume this is a, a stereo one. But if you click, it just says LFO one, but probably stereo. Uh, so let's go. Let's hook this up and let's also get rid of it in the matrix, the mono one. And let's connect this up to the position. So this is now stereo. And if it's stereo, I would imagine I would hear it different in the left and right, right? So it's stereo. But I, uh, it still sounds mono. Oh yeah, let's go down to six. I mean, back to one. You can see that still sounds uh, mono. If we give this a, a high depth. It doesn't, it doesn't sound stereo. And if we were to remove this and then go back to the mono version. So I'm just kind of uh, asking sort of in the comments, someone, please, what uh, what does this do? <laughs> I spent longer than I probably should have. I could just email them too. I don't know why I haven't, but it's just one of those things where I've just, you know, tried to figure it out on my own because I was kind of like doing it that way. You remember it more but I just couldn't figure it out. So anyways, that's the modulation system, a bit different way of connecting things. Honestly, once you get used to this, it is, you know, it's just another way to do it. The other way is to just sort of drag kind of like you classically would anyways. And, you know, there you go. Another thing you should know about just Soka Lab plugins in general is they have an accessible keyboard. And if this has been checked, it just shows all the values. 
It does not label the knobs anymore. It just shows their current value, which uh, obviously most of the, you're probably not going to want. So if this has happened to you, just click this off and it'll work. It's also MPE compatible. Another thing I haven't gotten the chance to try because I don't have an MPE controller. Uh, some someday, right? Someday. But anyways, that's the gist of it. There's a crap load of presets here. They have on the website like how many. And then there is also a bunch of wavetables, like so many wavetables. So let's just make a basic sound. So let's go for FM2. That's pretty cool. Let's, let's just see what it sounds like when we scroll through. Let's also get rid of the LFO for the moment. We don't need that. We'll, in fact, we'll just remove it. And yeah, let's say that we want to scroll through this. Let's change our LFO shape to be like a triangle. And let's drag the LFO onto the position and give it a small depth around the region that we're interested in. Let's also tempo sync it to, yeah, let's try a fourth at the beginning. Maybe not a fourth, maybe we'll do a half. And you have a bunch of controls here. We can offset it, shift it around. So for example, we can like push the wave up. This spins longer in one of the areas. You could do some stuff with phase. You can reduce the depth of it, the amplitude of the wave. So let's just go here and I'm just gonna reduce the depth instead. I prefer to see it as a depth. So we've got this set up. ADSR uh, by default is over here, like the master envelope. And then you have like your extras right here. So with this setup, let's go ahead. Let's bring on the distortion. There's a couple different distortions in here. Um, let's just try out simple at first, see what we got. Scroll through. And maybe now we pick a different one and check out some of the other FMs. Maybe there's a spot we'll find that we like. Yeah, sure, why not? That's kind of cool. Uh, we could mess with sub. Maybe we send out a sub as a sign. Dial it back a little bit here. Now there's some gating and things. I really don't think we're going to go for these more crazy modulations, but maybe we come in here and we select some notch filters to move around. So we'll go ahead, we'll choose this notch filter and we will drag this on to our... Actually, we'll just leave this the way it is. And we'll have the LFO modulate this as well. So we'll move the frequency around with this, drag this down. Up here in the corner, we have one, two, S and N. These just stand for our source input. So like right now, our source one, source two, our noise, and our sub. I said those backwards because here it's sub and noise. Uh, anyways, you click these, they come into here. So right now we only have, you know, the sub and the FM coming in. So this is doing our, you know, just a juicy filter. Maybe we could pump up the resonance. I'm not sure on a notch filter. Maybe it just makes it wider. Yeah, there's not really a difference here. So I don't think it matters for a notch filter. <laughs> I don't hear anything. So with that, let's go, let's grab the verb. We'll keep the size very small, the decay very small. And we'll bring the mix up so we can hear it. Okay, so let's zone in a little bit more. Okay, I like that. And let's also mess with the formants in the bend. I'm not sure if it's gonna work out, but the formants and bends, it's just so visual. I just, you know, gotta see what it's gonna look like. So let's grab the formant, drag it on here, give this another very tiny range. <laughs> a little is going to go a long way here and we'll also do that with the bend uh, we could do a different lfo but you know let's just stack it all on one why not let's just, i think that's gonna be fine for this sound <laughs> So we could do something with less or more. 
As far as I know, I don't believe there are macro controls. So if you're going to do something with a macro, you have to do it either through, uh, like for example, in FL, you could use patcher, you could use your DAW, whatever it supports as a way of controlling multiple parameters and as a host. Uh, but for natively doing it, I am unaware of a way to do that. I suppose we could do things with the sources as a way to sort of do a macro as well. Uh, but anyways, there you go. We got a basic bass sound. I'm a fan of basses, right? So we're gonna make some sort of a bass thing. And that is Wavetable. If you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know down in the comments or just, you know, your thoughts on it. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.